Hi and welcome to Sketching the World. Today I'm going to try to get some of the art materials that I never use, that I really hate using, and try and rework them, do some hacks, give them a glow up, and see if I can get them working in a way that I like. So yes, basically it's going to be a redemption arc for my art materials. I hope. Maybe not. Maybe this will all go horribly wrong and I'll end up deciding that these art materials can't be hacked, that there's no hope for them. But let's give it a go. Okay, art material glow up number one. I mentioned in my video I did recently, I have reviewing all my sketchbooks that this was my least favorite sketchbook it's yeah the paper is just not nice to use and so I thought I'd try hacking it try mucking around with it to see if I can get the paper to be more satisfactory and my first thing I want to do was do a like gouache background and see if it's actually nicer working onto the gouache rather than directly onto the paper and luckily here's one I did earlier like six months ago that I did and completely forgot about thanks past me so we'll try that first and then the second thing I'm going to try is putting some acrylic medium on the page some gesso I've never used this before so I'm going to give it a try and see what it's like to paint over let's go with this okay I'm going to try drawing on this now to see if it's much nicer than drawing on the crappy paper so I'll just start in with some watercolour markers and that's going on quite nicely over there over the gouache line probably got shot very well blue on blue but I'll give it a go mm, the texture of the paper is still quite textury for like a better word and that makes the materials hard to use I feel like watercolor pens and that work better on a smoother texture I wanted to do something like a cityscape to test this out. Yeah, because, like when I use these, I have to go over them a few times to get the colour to lay down quickly. Mm. I mean, this one's getting a bit low on, on, I was going to say ink, it's not really ink, it's whatever. you call it it's running a bit low on it <laughs> and so that's not going over that at all not liking using the watercolor markers on this even with the gouache base Try some neo colors. I don't know why they make these tins. They open the wrong way around. Like that's got the name on it. But you open it this way. No, you open it this way. But I would assume it opens that way. But they're obviously designed for left-handers. Which I guess is good if you're left-handed. But I'm not. <laughs> so yeah, let's try some of these now. Hmm. Yeah, the texture that's coming through, that's being annoying, don't like it. It's not something I'd use, not something I'd feel like happy using. Oh, not satisfying, that's a word I'm looking for, it's not satisfying to use. Goes over the marker pen quite nicely, but... 
yeah it's still got that sort of icky texture that is not a car shape that is so not a car shape <gasps> oh that's better so i'll put some wheels on them and tell their cars so my thoughts are even with a layer of gouache this is still not a satisfying sketchbook to use and I'd give it maybe 3 out of 10 yeah it doesn't really work for what I want to use it for put some green down there now So yeah, not really a glow up at all. I would consider this a fail. Thumbs down. Sketchbook. Not good. And yeah, it's that texture that I really don't like. It really is too rough and a little bit waxy almost. So let's now try using the gesso. I don't know whether you say gesso or gesso, I guess it's gesso. Let's. Uh. Wow. If I can get the lid off it. Yeah, I've never used this before. I stole it off my sister. I didn't steal it. I asked her if I could use it because she does acrylic painting, so she's got this for her acrylic paintings. Okay, that's totally obliterated the texture of the paper, so this could end up being a success. Now I have to leave that to dry. How long does it take for this to dry? Okay, I'll leave that for a little while and we'll come back to that. Okay, the gesso's dried and now I'm going to try drawing on this again and seeing how it works. Now I have to leave that to dry. How long does it take for this to dry? Okay, I'll leave that for a little while. And we'll come back to that. Okay, the gesso's dried and now I'm going to try drawing on this again and seeing how it works. So far so good. The paint mark is going on so much smoother. Oh wow. It's a whole different drawing experience using the paint markers on this on the gesso surface. I guess that's the whole point of the gesso. So yeah. Do, I'll try using this one that's a bit running out of ink. Yeah, that's much nicer. Much nicer. It's not going down as well, and I really am getting you can see the marks, it's not smooth. And yeah, the echo line going down really nicely. I feel like maybe the P 
pencils are like pushing through the gesso if that makes sense like the gesso is coming off not coming off but like the pencil's actually digging into it so I'm getting the texture of the paper underneath anyway. Now I'll try some Neo colours on it. Hmm, that's quite nice. Yeah, the Neo colours go on a lot nicer. But with the paper in its natural state, I felt like I was constantly having to press and press to get like any kind of coverage with the Neo Colors. But on top of the gesso, yeah, it's much nicer. So, I'd say, was this a success? Mm. jury's out <laughs> jury's out on that I mean I feel like having to prep the pages with gesso just to use them kind of makes the sketchbook a bit too much of a bother like for the cost of a thing of gesso you could um yeah, for the cost of a, what do you call this? Bottle, thanks. For the cost of a bottle of gesso, you could just go out and buy a new sketchbook and have something that worked a lot better. So I'd say, but maybe if you're stuck in a situation where you could not possibly get another sketchbook, but you could buy a bottle of gesso. I don't know what kind of post-apocalyptic world this is, but yeah, in that situation, it might be worth doing. But just for normal everyday life, do not bother. I mean, maybe if like someone had given you the sketchbook and you're going to have like a whole relationship issue because you're not using the sketchbook that your boyfriend bought you for your birthday or something, then yeah. <laughs> my sister's laughing at my wax scenarios. It could happen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's laughing because I have been addicted to the AITA forum on Reddit and that is just so much a situation that would be on that Reddit community. In fact, I think I've actually read one that was very similar. So yeah. If you're going to end up being on the Am I the Arsehole subreddit, then it might be worth going and buying some gesso instead. In TA. In TA, yeah. Uh, but in normal everyday life, don't bother. Thumbs down for this. I have to pack up all this stuff. Hack number two, getting crappy pencils to be less crappy. Let's try it. I saw this online and basically if you've got some cheap pencils or not so good, like don't do this with your like Caran Dash Luminance or with your Polychromos or whatever. But if you've got like cheaper pencils, soaking them in hot water apparently makes them work better. So I'm going to swatch a few of these before soaking them. I bought these. These are called Black Widow. And I bought them when I first started getting into art. I knew nothing about pencils. So I thought, ah, oh, yeah, these look good. I got them on Amazon. And they're not bad, but I don't know. Like you, they don't have a lot of pigmentation. So we'll do a yellow or pink. And yeah, so I just put them in this box and put them in storage 
and I've been sitting there ever since. I don't like pencils that aren't pigmented. I don't like having to press too hard. And yeah, the thing is to soak them in um, hot water. I wasn't sure how hot the water needed to be. So I've just made it as hot as it comes from the tap. Let's go with the dark one this time. And soak them for about five minutes. What's that one? It's really hard with these pencils. They're black, I guess, because they're Black Widow. So you have, it's really hard to see what colours they are. And let's go with, I feel like I should have a blue in this mix. Let's get a blue. There's a blue. Put that right down the bottom. So I've got yellow, pink, green, dark green, dark pink, blue. And we'll see what they're like after they've been soaked in hot water for five minutes. Come on, soak faster, guys. Soak faster. Hopefully these have had time to soak enough. So now let's try them out. Peaks here. I'm not sure whether that's meant to be this one or this one now. Wow. They're like using crayons, not like using pencils. Really has a feeling of a crayon. And yeah, it's really softened the pencil up. It's made it a whole different experience using it. I'm not sure how long that, like, whether it's just softened up the outside of the pencil and let's keep going and see how long it takes to get back to this. So yeah, that really does change how the pencil works. You have to keep rotating the pencil so that you're getting the soft edge, not the hard edge. Not. So the water soaked through only to a certain amount. And once you sort of use that bit, the coating of it, it's, um, yeah, just back to what it was before it was soaked, but it lasts for a fair while before you get back to that. Then I guess you would have to put it back in to soak some more. So let's go with the yellow now. Wow. Yeah, the first, like, bit of using it, it is really just like using a crayon. I think basically what's happening is like the pigments mixed with wax inside the pencil and when you soak it in the water it melts the wax so you're getting more of the pure pigment and less of the filler that goes with it. Now this green was very unpigmented, so hopefully it will come out a lot nicer now. Mm. Yeah, the soaking didn't last as, nearly as long as some of the others, and now let's try this one. It's a bit hard, I don't want to wipe it with the paper towel because then it wipes the whole end off the pencil. But doing it like this um, does get the paper a bit wet. And the effects don't really last that long. It would be quite annoying, I think, to do a whole sketch, having to soak your pencils, use them, then put them back into soak. It end up being incredibly time consuming. <laughs> Well, even after that one's been sitting there for a while, though, it's still quite nice, quite 
soft on what soft on. So yeah, if you've got some pencils that cheaper pencils and you want to get them working better, I definitely recommend this if you were doing a small sketch. <laughs> Just some small areas and you want to get a more crayon like effect than a coloured pencil effect. Now, it's like that one. A little bit longer. Yeah, I feel like the second soaking, like you don't need to soak it as long when you're doing it for a second time. And I'm pretty happy with that. So I'd say I'd give it the thumbs up for working as it's supposed to. It really softened the pencils up. It's a lot more pigmented. I'm saying it's a lot more pigmented, but really is it. But the pigment comes out a lot easier. It's just so easy to use. It's like, yeah, just buttery and soft and smooth. And you can blend the colours a lot better. But I'd probably give it a thumbs down for convenience. Like unless you want to sit there and have all your pencils soaking and um, keep re-soaking them, having to wait for them to soften up again. I mean, it could be a really handy thing to do if you want to have a crayon-like effect and a pencil effect without having too many different materials. You could put down a pencil layer, then come back and do the crayon type layer. That would work really well. Hmm. Other disadvantage, you go through your pencil really fast, like that's got no point on it at all. I'd have to resharpen that and then I'd probably need to soak that for quite a while to get it soft again. But it's not too bad a hack. And I've got this whole box of pencils so I might try that again sometime in the future and see how doing a complete sketch with it works. So pencil soaking method. Mm. Awesome. And kind of fun. Okay, next we've got these water-based markers. I call them textures, but I'm pretty sure that's just an Australian thing and they're not called textures anywhere else. But yeah, these were cheapos from Daiso and I don't think I've ever used them. Well, maybe used them once since I got them. I think half the reason I bought them was because they're in this cool little case, which I might repurpose and wonder. No. <laughs> Yeah, I could put all my pencils in here. Oh, that'd be great and that'd be super protected. But yeah, they're double ended, but like with a different colour on each end, not like a Tombow where you get a thick and a thin end. Just. And anyway, I heard this tip, which was to get your textures. I have to be able to pull these apart for this to work. And it's not happening. You get them, pull them apart, and soak the middle, and make ink. Now, my prediction for this is it's going to be more trouble than it's worth, and it'd be easier just to go and buy a bottle of ink. But um, I'm going to try it. I'm going to give it a go. But first of all, I need to find something to open this up with because... If I can't get the middle out, I can't try it. Wow. This is super fixed together. I'm going to go and get a palette knife and try it with that. Okay, I've got it apart. And that was really difficult. I did it with a kitchen knife. So luckily I didn't film it because it might have been quite horrific to watch. But no cuts. Now, first of all, I'm trying using it just like this, which I think is quite good. If I was going to do this, I would actually get a little Stanley knife or something and cut a bit of the plastic off. But I'm getting totally distracted here. <laughs> oh, I like this. 
Oh, on the water. Ooh. Okay, now what you do is you get the middle out of it. This may not work as well either because it's got tiny little middle bits because I've got the two sides. So I'll just put this in the water. I might get the other side out too if I can and have a two color like mix the two colors they're very close anyway in color this is kind of a bit of a ripoff when you think about it you've got this whole big marker but half of it is this bit in the middle which doesn't want to come out okay let's leave that <laughs> let's just ignore it shall we now i'm not sure how long you have to soak this in water for Okay, the ink wasn't coming out of this at all, so what I'm doing is getting the end of my paintbrush and just squeezing it. I've got a feeling this is just going to be a no-go. Come on, little guy. Squeaky. Oh, oh. You're being out. Yeah, I thought it might just come out like by osmosis or something but no you have to actually press it to get all the ink out and that's about as much ink as I can get and that is yeah look at that not usable I think if I put less water in there and more had a bigger like a normal marker that was had the full like big big middle that might be better but this is I've got the gesso still in that brush <laughs> so now yeah not good I would give this a thumbs down as I predicted, more trouble than it's worth. The only good thing out of this experiment was when I was doing the blob blobs with that. That was really fun. So yeah, I wouldn't recommend that. And like, it would be so much easier just to go and buy a bottle of ink. Or a few bottles of ink. Rather than doing all that mucking around and dismantling your markers and getting some weak watery color do not recommend I wouldn't call these crap art materials they're quite good soft pastels that I've had for literally decades like I just don't like using soft pastels so that's why I put them in this category I wanted to retry them I remember way back way way back way 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 back when I was in kindergarten we used to do a thing called wet pastels and we'd get soft pastels and draw on wet paper yeah I remember the teacher would soak the paper in water for a while so the paper got really wet and um yeah then we'd get our pastels out and sketch on it so I thought I might try that today I'm using a spritz bottle because I still have trauma. This is a trauma dump, right? But when we used to do this in kindergarten, the teacher would soak the paper in water and then she'd tell you to go and get the, a sheet of paper out. Like there'd be a whole block soaking and she'd say, oh, go and get a sheet of paper so you can do your wet pastels. And the paper would always rip. And because, you know, you're a little kid and you're trying to peel off one sheet of paper out of all this soaking wet paper. It's soft, it's soggy. And then the teacher would be like, oh, Catherine, why did you do that? And yell at you for doing it. And I don't know why she didn't just get us to spritz the paper with a water bottle. I mean, I was in kindergarten. <laughs> you're not that dexterous when you're in kindergarten. And to be honest, I don't think I'm that dexterous now. So yeah, I'm just going in on the wet paper. This probably isn't the best paper to use. It's just cartridge paper when I could have used like a proper pastel paper. 
if I had it. But let's get started. I've obviously used these because some of them, like this one's really short, but I can't remember ever using them. And yeah, I've had them for so long and I think I've just carried them around from house to house every time I've moved and never actually done anything with them. And it's not my favourite thing to use. I don't like the the powderiness, the dust. But yeah, they go down really nicely on wet paper. I like it. I'm just blending that with my finger. I'm going to have the world's dirtiest fingers. By the time I finish filming this today, but that's nothing, nothing unusual for me. <laughs> the wetter the paper is, the nicer the pastels go down like this bit here with a little pool of water on the paper and that's working really nicely I'm not really sure what I'm doing here I have no plan for this picture I'm just just putting down colors Now the paper's starting to dry. I might try spritzing it again and see. Actually, let's try this for an experiment. Oh yeah. I like that. I like that a lot. I did put a drawing board down before I did this because I didn't want to get a mess on the table. These are really nice pastels, these Derwent dry pastels. What did they call them? Soft pastels. Really glad I if I threw them out all these years. I really like to how when you're layering this the sort of texture of the pastels moves so like this is all got this texture going this way but I can go over it like this and sort of scratch into it and get a whole different texture happening muddy there because it's so wet. I 
and the paper's starting to dry now so these are behaving more like regular pastels. I might leave it for a while and come back and try to layer over this and see how I go. So after doing all these hacks I've got one conclusion to make and that is a lot of them probably aren't worth the time and effort that it takes. <laughs> so um, yeah, the using the soft pastels on the wet paper I really loved and that's something I would probably do again. But the others, um, even the ones that work quite well, there's still a bit of effort involved and I would probably prefer just to go and buy better materials and cut my losses with the ones that don't work. I would consider doing the soft pastels on the wet paper it isn't really a hack, it's a technique. Um, but yeah, sometimes it's good to get back to kindergarten and see what works there. So thanks for watching. As always, if you like my content, please subscribe to my channel so you keep seeing my videos. If you like this video, thumbs up and there will be more coming up soon. Thanks for watching.